This phone has a whopping five cameras on the back, and they're a giant leap forward in sophistication over the multiple lenses on other phones. I'm Rich Brome with PhoneScoop, and this is a quick look at the Nokia 9 PureView, the company's new flagship phone. I'll get to the cameras in a sec, but first, I just want to say I really like the Nokia 9 just as a phone. The new Nokia has been getting really good at making phones that have excellent design and good materials. The 9 represents the pinnacle of that. I like everything about this hardware, but I'll call out the 3D curved glass back, which is both handsome and a delight to hold. Nokia has also opted for an in-display fingerprint reader, which makes sense since there's already more than enough happening on the back. The rest of the specs are respectable for a high-end phone, if not totally top-end. So back to the cameras. There's this interesting little company called Light, and they make crazy cameras with tons of lenses. They don't capture photos, they capture a light field. And that lets them do neat things like create truly professional, accurate focus effects without any moving parts, and change the focus after the fact. It also lets them capture more dynamic range, which means more detail in shadows and highlights. All of that tech has now been put into a phone, and it's pretty great. The camera interface is surprisingly simple. You just have an option for the depth, on or off, and a toggle for saving raw files. The magic happens automatically in the background. Where it gets fun to play with is after the fact. Integrated right into Google Photos is the depth control and the ability to simply tap to refocus anywhere. And it really truly is refocusing the photo after the fact. It's not some cheap effect. The results hold up to scrutiny. Things should get even more interesting with the promised Adobe Lightroom software. It should let you do even more with the raw files right on the phone. This fascinating photography monster will run $6.99 and is coming to the US in March.